The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 62. You get the NASDAQ flat. S&P's up 6.5. Gold contract up $9.70 at 14.09.80. You get silver up 5 cents, $15.34 an ounce. Light sweet crude. Flat, $57.34 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year up uh, 7 ticks, 127.24. 30-year up 19 ticks at 155.06. And King Dollar, King Dollar down up 43 ticks, trading 95.675. The euro is at 113. The yen is at 107.5. And, and the pound is at 120.17 to 1 U.S. dollar. And uh, bottom line is that uh, that metal contract uh, is hanging tough. You know, we had a you know, big week last week. Yeah. Um, you know, it's up here. You got 218,000 contracts, which is huge, uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, I suspect we're going to take some kind of a rest here. But the bottom line is that you got a push here. I mean, look at this. Friday, we did 519,000. Thursday, we did 545. And at 218, we're going to do probably 400. You know, that's, yeah. that's buying once again. Um, you know, some of the higher volume equities uh, in this market. I saw Beyond Meat is coming down slightly. Where was that? Let's see. BYND. So that's down uh, $13.5. Uh, not the end of the world, but we're at uh, 140 uh, The high out there is 201 Yeah. So. <laughs> Quite a pullback. Yeah. Now, have you tasted any of these yet? I don't think so. I got to taste one. I haven't, I haven't tasted any of these. I don't think I've had Beyond Meat. I think I've had an Impossible Burger. Okay. Um, which is pretty good. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it's. Does it taste different than a burger, though? Come on. What do you expect me to say? I just know it tastes identical to a, a I beef head. Just ask no, no, I know. But no, I, I don't think it's ever going to taste identical to a to a cow. Right. Um, All right. So let's take. Let's look at some of our higher volume equities out here today. You got Caesar. So, so this is this is pretty wild. Yeah. You know, when you when you go back, you know, Caesar's, I mean, it used to be the premier, you know, 20 years ago. That was the premier. Might even be a little bit further. Sorry yeah, to, 30 sorry years to ago. To, well, yeah, 39. That, that'd be like year 2000. I don't think Caesar's was, it's more like an 80s, 90s that they were the, the creme de la creme, right? Right. Right. And, you know, so you got a takeover happening here. This is after, you know, Caesars had already gone BK. Um, Icon turned around and got in the middle of it. This is going to be a big deal for him. Uh, so you got Eldorado is just buying Caesars for $8.58 billion uh, in a deal that Icon basically created. Okay. Um, Let's see. The agreed equity value of twelve seventy-five a share, mix of cash, all out of stock, represents a premium of about twenty-eight percent of its closing price. Let me just—I'm just curious as to like how far the stock came from its low. So if we go back ten years, well, go back fifteen. Yeah, so this is, see, this is a new stock. That's what's going on. Okay, so even though it's an old name, it's a new stock. So yeah. it started somewhere about 1575, went down to 450 in, is that 2012? Yes. Yeah, and then hit 330 again in 2015. Look at this. This is pretty crazy. And then five bucks only, uh, what, eight months, five, six it's months ago? It's below the market, yeah. Probably, yeah. probably New Year's Eve, uh, yeah. or excuse me, Christmas Eve. Yeah, so we'll see where this yeah. old baby's going to go. Um, they got a lot of competition now in not just uh, huge Vegas, right, in terms of worldwide casinos. Right. I think uh, Encore Boston just opened up, actually. It did. That in. Yeah. yeah. I heard the, uh, the interview with the CEO, and you know what's so intriguing is that they're looking, you know, we know how many gambles are around Boston. Boston, in general, folks, okay, is... 
that's why one of the reasons that Foxwood has done so good. They're they're perfectly circled between New York and Boston. Do you know what I mean? Foxwood had a monopoly on Northeast gambling. Big they, time. They, they, Big they time. all got to split the pie now. That's right. And what he was saying, they're expecting because Boston's such an iconic city. They're expecting their overseas clients coming into Boston. Okay. To check out Boston and gamble and then get back on the plane. Okay. So I thought that was like, wow, that was... That <laughs> That's was... a nice marketing line from the CEO. It is. Well, I, I, don't, is. Know, I don't know if I... Uh, there's already enough to do in Boston, and they got Foxwoods right there if you actually want to make a trip. Uh... I, I guess where I'm coming from is that when they... Um, Macau, I mean, they have a whole bunch of companies that just bring people from China to Macau. I sure. suspect that they're going to have marketing all over Europe. Guess what? Six and a half to eight and a half hours, nonstop to Boston. Yeah. Come on in, spend some money. I think they probably tried that with Atlantic City, though, and how'd that do? As in, you know, I'm just like, that's the CEO out there saying, we're going to bring tourists to Boston just to gamble. I'm like, oh, oh, well, you know, that's great <laughs> if it happens. No doubt. We go take a look. Now, what you have between gold and silver, folks, you, you got, it's not divergence, okay, but what's, what you need is that silver is going to need an additional sign of strength to really break its larger trend. You know, we, we broke the trend that said, okay, silver can go to 1647. Well, we broke that with conviction. But when I bring this up, what you're going to see, there's a, there's a differential in the aspect of, you know, the larger trend still in silver. And if I bring this up, what you're going to see, it's actually, well, I can do it this way. You're going to see that, you know, yeah, I, I can, you're right at it to even break that uh, $21, you know. So we're coming right up to it. So what I'd like to really see here, here, I'll bring this. Uh, actually, you can just can, zoom in if you want. Yeah, and right. I can bring it, nope, I'll bring it, it closer. Keep it, nope. right, 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 like, it'll stay yeah. right. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. So you can see, you know, it needs... I suspect we need to build some cars. What I don't want to see, actually, is I don't want to see this busted right now because that would be quite a move. Because um, you need a bar like we had last week. You know, the bar last week is a, a dollar ten in silver, which is nice. Get a little sideways movement next couple of weeks, then bust it, then bingo, then you got action, man. Because that's twenty-one bucks. That's yeah. A, that's that's a that's a good number. Quite a different chart compared with gold, man. It is. Yeah. It, it's and if we, if we put up, put up the the gold chart, folks, what happens is this. You know the I can make the case that gold can get to its all time highs. Uh, you take the look at this con continuous contract, and what you're going to see here is that the the high that was generated there. And there, I'm talking about uh, October the, of 12. Yeah, October of 1794. Now, that broke that concisely. This one here is a little trickier because, you know, you really, you should be touching three, and I'm really only touching two there. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? I don't so, think that qualifies as yeah, a trend. Yeah, you know, you need, you need three of them. So, but bottom line is that, hey, listen, man, and, and you're going to see this consolidation from 2013. We went into it nice. You know, and it looks to me like this thing is real. And the doll is going along with it. That's the other side of it. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 69. NASDAQ's up 9. S&P's up 8.5. Come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 66. You get the Nasdaq up six. S&Ps are up eight and a half. And uh, let's go over to uh, Bernie Sanders, okay? So uh, this is uh, headline grabbing, no doubt. So let's see. So Bernie Sanders is going to propose today canceling the nation's outstanding $1.6 trillion in student debt and offsetting the cost with a tax bill on Wall Street transactions. The Vermont Senator will propose legislation of Monday that could provide, would provide debt relief to 45 million Americans who have college loans, according to the fact sheet provided by his Senate office. The plan would um, include a five tenths of one percent on stock transactions. Uh, is that that's one percent, right? Tax no, on one tenth. So one tenth. They're all. They're all. Yeah. Point okay. Half a percent on stock transactions. Yeah. One tenth a tax on bond, and that is five one-thousandths, which would be one-half of one-tenth, to and, put it in. Uh, yeah, and then a, uh, is that a tens of... Derivatives that's, transaction. Yeah. That's what I said. That's, that's the five one-thousandths, right, or one-half right. of one-tenth. So I suspect this is dead in arrival, um, but you know what should happen agree. here? <laughs> what should definitely happen, folks, okay? W what happened years ago is that the banks got in the middle of this student debt deal, and unfortunately, you can't write it off even in bankruptcy. I agree. That's and, really and all that needs to be done. Garbage, that's garbage, exactly. That's all that needs to be done. Right, and right. it's like, I had student debt. I paid right. it off. Right. I shouldn't be penalized, and I would be penalized for paying it off right. if everybody else gets the reprieve there. Right. But the, 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 goal, the, the whole point of bankruptcy is you're under an insurmountable level of debt. Right. I think many people would agree that yeah. a lot of students across the country found themselves in that situation. Right. They've kind of been preyed upon. And, you oh, know, there's no doubt, and man. Not to say this happened in the housing, though. They bear some of the responsibility, man. People that go to school and take out a quarter million dollars in debt with no plan right. on how to use that degree you're paying for to get it back. That's right. Well, That's you're right. going to have to declare bankruptcy. That right. was a, a, right. a, in, you know, a poor decision financially. Right. And that's why you have bankruptcy, because we all can make poor decisions sure. financially, and you can rebound from it. You learn right. from it. Right. Um, and, and what yeah. happens here, now this is what is, is 
So picture in the housing crisis, in order to get the loan, if you didn't have the money, you basically were basically fraudulently filling out those, those forms, and that was, like, prevalent. In the school deal, because this, the federal government is backing it, you, you just had to tell them, that, yeah, I don't have any money, but yeah. I'm going to school, and they're going to give you the money. Yeah. So in, in the housing benefit, a lot of people weren't fraudulent, too, though, and they got given debt that they probably shouldn't have been given, just to put, and that's how this one relates in the same way. I mean, that's, you know, that students, and that's the tough part. Now, we're the, the tough part about the student deal is they are given a lot of leeway because that's the whole point, right? They're not, they're not right. even earning income. Right. So it's a weird deal in terms right. of, okay, I'm going to loan you $200,000. You're not even going to work for four years. I don't even have any income to go off. Right. Um, and that's what's been abused in the and system. Then, yeah. And on top of that, that is what raises the price of education. Because if you have a third, sure. if you have a third party right. paying, I it's agree. a no-brainer. Yeah. It's like, okay, hey, let's raise yeah. it again. We're just going to give more money. We're going to get the money. We'll worry about it later. Well, so. The tough part is you, you get this. It's a life lesson, unfortunately, Oof. right? I mean, the, these aren't. I can't, 12 even, year olds. I can't even children. imagine. These, these are adults, all right? You're over 18, okay? So unfortunately, you're still very young. Still you have young. a lot to learn. Right. I agree. But then you, you're merging these two things. You're also a person where it's like you have to understand that you can't take out $200,000 worth of debt if you're not going after a degree that you plan to use to pay back that debt. And I think that's where the separation, unfortunately, happened with a lot of people taking out debt. And they said, well, that's just what you do, you know? And that's what they were told by a lot of people oh, in the yeah. industry, which is oh, the yeah. bummer. Yeah. Um, so you're going to see a lot, and, you know, I'm pretty liberal. I think you're pretty liberal when it comes right. to financial stuff. We merge, you know, I have right. fiscal conservatism. I can get along with right. that. I don't think that that is a mainstream thought even in the Democratic Party. That's where I reside, and I don't yeah. think so. But, like, I think that their attention would be much better served by saying, we don't have to take the government and pay anybody back. Just give them the option. Yeah, to, to go, go bankrupt, right. which is what everyone should have. Right. Um, yeah, there's no so doubt. So hopefully that's where that conversation goes, because um, I'd support that. I don't know who wouldn't. I mean, it's pretty intense. Man. I said uh, one time to one of my friends, only a group of uh, non-working students could get so railroaded in terms of lobbying to be unable to declare bankruptcy. Yeah. You know, as in right. no other group. Whether it's retirees, that that wouldn't happen. Oh, that wouldn't you know, happen. yeah. No, whether it's voting. whether it's Wall Street, that right. wouldn't happen. Right. All right? Um, right. Only somebody as ill served as, like literally a student base. Nobody was really sticking up for them, and that's where those, you know, consumer protection watchdog type. I mean, Huge. hopefully, yeah, because yeah. they really, the banks got them, uh, got them over hard on that one. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a monster. Yeah. So oil. Let's go take a look at oil. The uh, oil market, no doubt. Uh, you know, last week. Uh, Bottom line is trying to break into its downdraft. You know, uh, it's going to have a little, you know, tough time here. I mean, we, we, you know, last two weeks we went up from this fifty dollars. You're at fifty-seven forty-four, but you're coming right into, you know, this would be considered ice, like a, a perfect white cough ice, man. And you know, you had the downdraft that was out there on the thirteenth, the twenty-third, and then you got the additional one out here on the thirtieth. Uh, it's pretty right. remarkable the month we've had, just because say the 23rd, it's the 24th of June, and man, I quite know. a month in terms of that month going from um, even back it up. Can I just steal yeah. from one? Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, with those two days, okay. Yeah. yeah, going all the way back there. So that's about two months, right? But it is about two, where there's April 24th. We were sitting at 65 bucks. So in the span, that's really 24th. Today's June 24th. So two I months know. exactly. We go from 64 down to what's our low? 50, 50. bucks. And now we're right back at that 50% almost. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Quite a run, man. And, you know, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, we'll see with, oh, let's go see where gasoline is because that gasoline, that refinery, um, July, let's see. Yeah. Not natural gas. So it's dollar eighty six wholesale. Okay. So having the same, same, same time frame. Yep, that's 23rd, right? Yeah, 23rd and the uh, 30th, yes. So even gasoline. Sure, um, yeah. Now, that's pretty intense because if gasoline can't hold up like that, uh, you know, we'll see what happens only this morning. But the reality is is that you get that big refinery that's, that's yes. it's not only just closed. You, you had the big refinery. Yeah, it's not there right? anymore. Yeah, um, and so, that's the, the largest in the Northeast. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and gas came from uh, 166 wholesale, we're at 186. And that's, oh, let's go to natural gas. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, NG 
because this 225, yeah, this is just bouncing along. That took a hammer in when they came up with those numbers on Thursday, right? Look at that. Thursday we went from 230 to 215. Yeah, that was a huge run. Big run. And yeah. so natural gas folks has to get back inside 230 to do anything, you know? And really, it's almost like, let me put this back. It almost looks like it's an, almost in a whole different range right now, actually, NG. Those lows there are, yeah, 250. Yeah, so it's that's in the range 211 to 189 or something. Plenty of natural gas out there. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 51. NASDAQ is flat. S&P is up 6.5. We'll come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is up 64. Nasdaq's up 5. S&P's are up 8.5. And, a half. and um, let's go to Mark in Bedford. Hey, Mark, what's going on, brother? Good morning, TNT. How are you two? Good morning, Mark. Doing great, man. Yourself? Good. Hey, before I forget, I hope you, if I don't talk to you next week, I hope you guys have a good fourth. You too, You man. also, man. Let's make it a great one, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I, want, I have a gold question for you, but before I ask it, Tom, yeah, you... We're talking about the gambling in um, 
that new casino here in Boston. But a heads up, when they opened uh, this the Springfield uh, casino, I think it's I think it's from GM Springfield. Is it what is. I think the yeah. name of it is. Yeah. Uh, the Mohegan Sun down in Connecticut took a big hit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I would assume, as you uh, hypothesis at the top of the show, uh, that Boston will even take more of a hit off of, off of that. But that's an interesting observation. No, it is. You know, just to throw in there. From, from, from Europe just to gamble and then fly home. So Yeah, and who knows, man? Boston's a beautiful city. I'm sure right. they're going to try and pitch that. The tough part is, man, there's a lot of casinos now fighting for that piece of the pie. Oh, big time. Where you have the MGM, which is an enormous one that just opened, and yep. then you have um, now the win. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So let alone you got Foxwood still, you got Mohegan still, and the amount of money they spent, billions. I don't know if the pie is that big. I mean, they they because I have one good friend who works for MGM, as in he works for an advertising company that's yeah. big on them. So he has you know info on what's their projections. Man, the projections on these casinos I'm are honest, for a lot of gambling coming yeah. from I'm not sure where. When you look <laughs> at how big the pie is, that they how are you gonna you know, this isn't exactly the strip in Vegas anyway. We get to, but as in the, uh, those two alone are billion-dollar casinos the new Boston now. One has, the advantage that the new Boston one has over everything else is that it's it's the closest fly time from from London to here. You know, as opposed to fly, even flying to New York, it's another I don't know what 45 minutes to an hour in the air. Yeah. So you know, if you factor that as someone who wants to come over for a long weekend, you know. Yeah, the, 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 and it's right the there, which Fox's is a little bit of a ride. That's, oh, yeah. that's enough of a ride yeah, where no I doubt. wouldn't, you know, we had to make a trip, a plan to right. even go from Boston. Talk right. about an hour and a half, whatever, oh, yeah. two hours, yeah. Right. So, so Tom, I know you talked in the update at 10, at 10 o'clock that we thought we would go sideways for a while and then start the downturn on the S&P again. So here's my question. Are you more bearish on the S&P or more bullish on gold or about equal? Um, I'm definitely bullish on gold. Um, on the S&P, what we have here is this, right? So what we did on Friday, right? Now, Friday was option expiration, folks, okay? Which, you know, you always have volume come in. And we had 2 billion shares in the NYSE, 2.1, okay? On the, Na on the NASDAQ composite, what we had is uh, 2.8, okay? So that's a monster number. And even though it's subtle, we did basically trade down. And like I put in my daily newsletter today, I says, okay, listen, it's a tough call because what I have found is this. If you trade down on option expiration at highs or you trade up on option expiration at highs, it doesn't matter what the sum or whatever it is, that is where the market wants to go. So in this case, I'm saying to myself, well, this is interesting, man. We trade down slightly. You get an explosion of volume. It's like, okay, is that uh, what we're doing here, are we just testing the highs, even though that this S&P is in a small ABC structure on the way up, it's a confirmed ABC up, it's like, okay, you know, if this stays at these highs for too long, you know, the high is 29.54. Well, actually, no, it's higher than that. It's 29.64, intraday. Um, it closed, the high, let's see, is that a close? 29, no. That so, was a super low close, Yeah, so actually. this would be the... the even that one was twenty nine. So twenty nine fifty four is the number. Okay. Yeah, that's a close up there. So if we stay here too long, then it'd be like, okay, that that's a heads up there. That that may be it. You know, um, right now, I'm still going with the ABC up that it, it took out last week because that just you know that's a confirmed ABC up. So it's like, okay, man, it might build cause, blow top side, and that's what it wants to do. And it's the right time of the month to do this because we're coming into the end of the month, the beginning of the month, window dressing, and July 4th. Everyone, for some reason, loves to run the market on July 4th. So, you know, we'll see what happens when, when it gets up there. I mean, when you take a look at the, the short-term rates, the long-term rates and the dollar, they all want to go lower, you know? So if that's the case, it's like, Okay, they go, go lower. If you're a fundamentalist, you're looking at the S&P and say, okay, if they go lower, these companies can borrow more money. As they borrow more money, what, is the, what comes to their bottom line? You know, so. Okay, so here, here's another question. I know that when the, uh, when the Dow and the S&P have had real big 
big heavy swings, either up or down. You talk about energy in the in the marketplace. Right. That. Right. So we've had a couple of real good days on the upside uh, on the uh, on gold. So do you think we'll have some give back based upon all that forward momentum, all that energy driving gold up? Not so just we'll yet. Have, have a rest or two, or, or we just go to rock it higher. I don't see this pulling back. What I what I see is that you know, like twelve bucks is no big deal. You can go twelve bucks, eight bucks, five bucks. You know what I mean? Something like this. You know, you're talking a fourteen hundred dollar, you know, basically vehicle here, right? Um, so that's kind of what I see. We went so dramatically. I don't see a move like we just did last week. You didn't have to build cars for you know six, seven weeks. You know that's what normally happens in order to do that. What we have, and I'd, I'd say this is one of the biggest things, and that's why you want to watch all these commodities, is that this dollar has broken its uptrend. You know, so if it looks like we're going to have volume again today, and if we do, that's a whole different dynamic. You get four days in a row of selling in the dollar, and that momentum will overtake everything because the currency markets are bigger than every market in the world you know you get everyone in the world you know either going in or out of currencies meaning the lots of central banks and things that we can't even comprehend you know what i mean but there's there's money movement there so if that's how the much, case how much of the how much of the dollar and gold how much of the dollar and the gold and, the, and i guess the s p also is predicated on what's going to happen uh, at the end of the week between um, Trump and Xi you know, about the, uh, the trade wars. I, I think it's a, I think it could move the market greatly. I don't know about gold, but I think it's going to really have a plus or very big plus or very big minus on the, uh, on the, on the uh, S&P, depending on what happens. Yeah, I agree. The, the S&P, listen, the, the, the S&P 500, the 500 biggest companies out there, Guess what? There, Bloomberg did today. There's a, there's a whole breakdown. I can I haven't looked at the whole thing yet, but they broke down 10,000 companies, or 10,000 uh, uh, pieces of something that people that companies are paying. Items. Yeah, items. Okay, Thank products you, that are paying tafts on, right? And it's astronomical, man. <laughs> I mean, they. So there's going to be fundamental research here that shows how much these companies are going to have to pay, and have paid. That's going to make a difference because, you know, that's a, that's a P.E. So bottom line is that, you know, it, it is what it is. Yep. So that'll make a difference in the S&P because if they're making less money, people are going to want to pay less money. There's potential them. for some volatility. You better oh, be yeah. aware for sure yeah. with that cheat. Well, anyway, have a, have a great fourth, guys. If you, please do not drink and drive. You okay, as well, man. Mark. Thanks, have a man. great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming Bye -bye. right back. We have the Dow up 58. Nasdaq's flat. S&P's up 750. Gold's up by 1230. Silver's up nine cents. Still catching a bid. Come right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 47. Nasdaq's down 5. S&Ps are up 6.5. And, and uh, you know, when we left on Friday, we were talking about Paul from Henderson, Nevada, just could have a field day because of the weekend, right? Yes. Well, guess what? <laughs> I what does Paul look at for those uh, unfamiliar? I, Bitcoin. That's right. And, and the cryptos. Look at this, <laughs> Along folks. with plenty of things. Quite a, quite a jump, man. So, uh, and what, yeah, I thought we were under 10,000. 9,900, I believe, was, yeah. uh, and that's where they have that closing at 99.39. Of course, it trades over the weekend. We'll pull up the chart in a moment, but yeah, 10,918, reaching a high of 11,251. And pulling up the chart, this is over at that crypto watch. So, this is an hourly chart um, going over the weekend. I'm just checking, that's the 22nd. Yeah, and this is the 23rd as we go. This is yesterday, I actually reached 11,369. So, this is Bit Finex, um, and that's where you have all these different kind of um, yes. places these are trading. And uh, but yeah, nonetheless, ten thousand nine fifty, man, quite a charge higher. And putting this on, let's just put it on. I, even I like mean, a, four months. A, I think it's gone from thirty three hundred to eleven thousand. Yeah, and I wonder why sometimes these. But either way, I mean, just going back to May fifth, they pulled it. It's almost up double from May 5th, pretty right. remarkable. Yeah. And if you want to hear something that's deviant, folks, okay, this is crazy, like, when we take a look at this chart, um, I was just saying this to Tommy, that when the CME, you know, bottom line, start, they start trading it on the CME, that was the high. So, so when first time futures kind of became available. Right. Yeah. That was the high, 19,511. And then really close to the low is that that's when the CBOE decided to can the contracts. <laughs> yeah, and they're not available on Nadex anymore, right. so there was kind of a triggering effect, as in you could have derivatives based on futures right. in some degree, and obviously you can't have them if the futures aren't trading. Yeah. Um, and uh, that might not be a coincidence, as in you yeah. know, you're taking the ability to short off of the table. That's what everyone kept saying when it was at 20,000. Like, yeah. oh, you're going to have a chance to short it now. Okay, we well, give them a chance to short it. It goes from 20,000 to 3,000. Ta-da, the markets are not liquid anymore. We're going to do away with futures. You won't have this very easy short function anymore. Oh, we're back uh, up to 11,000, totally. right? But you also have the Facebook crypto out there, some oh, legitimacy. Yeah. So there's been good some, press. some good news, right? Yeah. Yeah. So canopy growth. We take a look at canopy. We have out here, folks, a picture. This has been a huge consolidation. Um, and if you're watching Tiger TV right now, I'll show you the, the bottom of this. It's certainly not where we are. We're down to $1.30 right now. Um, you're coming into a swing point of uh, 38.38, and it's going to have the volume. We're at 38.83, uh, but we hit 38.44. This is going to break it with volume, so I suspect we got an ABC down. And it looks to me like you're going to get down into this probably 29 area. Now, this is pretty wild. I was going over this Friday. So they came out with their numbers, but when you see this, you know, the, the CEO, let's see here, they're, they're only, they're, let me see, they're, yeah, it's the margins, they're, they're at a 16%. 
marginal. They're, 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 the number of the spread has gone down dramatically as to what they're going to make. Um, C's gross margin improving. Or, well, the, let me see if I can find the actual one with the CEO yeah, come maybe up. Maybe just because, to say what's there right there. Okay. We're going to go one down. That's going to get us pretty close. And I already brought it up, so. Ah, uh, well, that's the, yeah. Unfortunately, it's probably a different one versus, because this is back to Friday, which is 621. Um, one more down, maybe. Okay, we can find it during the next break, maybe. So what it, what it, what it happened, here it is, right? There you go. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So here you go. So cannabis sh shares uh, fell the most since December after the world's largest cannabis company reported steeper than expected loss in weak gross margins. When you see this gross margin. Yeah, it's though. right there in that third paragraph, I think. Yeah. Right there? Yep, right. Yeah. So the Smith Falls, Ontario-based company reported a just gross margin of 16% for the fiscal fourth quarter, yep. ended in March 31st. That was below consensus analyst estimate of 24 and a decline from 22 in the prior quarter. It's lost before interest tax, depreciation, amortization, EBITDA, uh, 74 million U.S. loss, yep. much wider than the expected. So it was Canadian 64. They lost 98. Um, at the end of 2017, Canopy had 600,000 square feet of licensed growing space and a gross margin above 50%. 50. Yeah. Quite a number, man. And what I was getting into there is that this is a commodity, folks. And, you know, the, the CEO is claiming that here. So the uh, Litton's, now Lit, I, Litton is the, the CEO. I tell you, before, because okay. I, I think they started right here, too. This is where we could have stayed there and we would have been a nice, tidy little company, probably quite profitable. But, um, when it attracted four billion dollar investment, you need to use that capital build scale, and we did. So right. I mean, that's that's a valid argument. But the the problem here is, why didn't analysts understand that? That's right. what I always why. Right. So why was the expectation not there? That's that's where there's obviously a problem in terms of. So can it be expects production to more than double to thirty four thousand kilograms in the current quarter? Uh, yeah, this the this is as you're saying that they. The fourth quarter represented the bottom of our margin trough, um, and grass, gross margins are expected to rise above 40% by the end of fiscal 2020, which runs until March 31st. Now read the next one, though. Watch this. So Canopy should also report positive EBITDA from its Canadian operations by the end of fiscal 2021, according to the CFO Mike Lee. However, Lee also forecast a material <laughs> net loss in the current quarter due to non-cash charges for yep. stock compensation and the rising price of cannabis co Canopy's convertible bonds. Right. So yeah. this is, you know, my, my take on this business, folks, okay, it's going to be great business, no doubt yeah. about that. And then they compare themselves to Amazon, Amazon at the end. Which <laughs> you can't. No. Right. No. But this is a commodity business. And a commodity business, okay, the margins are smaller. They're in the growth business, man. You know, you're, you're growing weeds. Um, and, yeah. you know, it's going to be tough. It's I mean, kind of it, a merge of the two, in know? my opinion, as well, in, you, you know, it's a commodity business, but it's also, uh, think of the Wild West in terms of alcohol becoming legal, in terms of there should be um, huge expenses on capital expenditure for these companies. Because if you have a shot of being one of the few that, emerge as canopy obviously does you better just keep expanding because if you're not gonna somebody else is gonna yeah no there's no doubt That's about what, you that. know what i mean it's I, like i, I get... do agree in the in the sense that i don't i wouldn't even really want to see them um making money you know why you put that money back into more stores or as the you know what i'm saying as in to be profitable they'd be great but as you said, they just got billions in investment. That money, they should be growing, man. It seems like that industry is just ripe for I, I guess, expansion like we haven't seen since alcohol became legal. Really? Right, I, mean, that's, right. you know, it's, I, I guess, though, the, the differential I'd see between alcohol and weed, like we don't have it around here, but if they're in California, which is legal, right? Re residential. Uh, uh, recreational yeah. and then Colorado. Yes. It's like people can grow their own too. It's not like you can open uh, up a still immediately. So. No, not always. Oh. State by state, they allow okay. different. Some states, some states put the clamp down, man. They yeah. make you go into the store. Other states, I know Massachusetts, you are allowed to grow, um, right. but that's not true in all right. states actually. Right. And that's where they could spend that money on that lobbying. I'm just going from a business. I, oh, yeah. I wouldn't agree at all. Oh with that. no, but they, they're going. But to. They yeah, don't that's want right. that. No, so that's don't. where why you right. like banking money. But guess what? They're banking money, so they don't have to go to investors. So they keep canning. You know, it's one on the other. But wow. Well, yeah. Dow Dow Industrials up 43. Nasdaq flat down four. Actually, S and P's up six up six and a half. There, there, folks. Tommy and I come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And if we do go back over to the canopy uh, as to the top and the bottom of the consolidation, um, I would wait, right? You know, we got a couple of Tigers asking, you know, I think this thing's going to, you know, go right back into its strength. Meaning, Finish come on, that asking what, where the buy would be, right? Yeah, it, you know, coming all the way down to the 28 bucks. You, you know, so we'll, we'll see how it breaks. It's, it's going to go after this swing low out here. Uh, the, well, for, yeah, 38, 38 is the swing low. And... You can see last week you, you moved down with some volume, 26.7 million. And if you break that, then, you know, you, your probability gets pretty good that you get to 28. We're only $2 into that bar right now. It'd be tough to get that volume with uh, earnings being in that volume bar. Yeah. You know, to beat that volume. Right. And that's a big bar right. because right. just like what we talked about, you exactly. get a surprise on yeah. margins to the downside right. like that. Yeah. And they're all set up like this, too, by the way. I did. I, I looked at these on Friday. So you'll see that, you know, there's some, of course, that are stronger than others. But if we, uh, Aurora, ACB, I'll do this in the U.S. So that's at 7.22. Yeah, they had some volume last week, too. Yeah, that's, uh, what was that, 7.13 with 18 million. 16 million. Yeah. You know, so we bring this back and you're going to see it. 
Kind of set up the same way. The, the bottom of that one is uh, 483. Sure. How about Tilray? T L R Y. Oh, wait to see this. Oh my God. No, we, okay. we haven't looked at this facility. You're not going to believe what happened with this thing. Oh, this, I think I might believe it. This <laughs> is something else. You better believe it because Seriously. anything's possible. In because these look what it went down to. It went down. It went $300 to $34. $334. That's, that's just amazing. Yeah. Be careful out there trading these things. Yeah, big trading, time. trading companies with no earnings. Yeah, because that can go to 21. Stay right there, folks. We got um, uh, TD Ameritrade coming up. I'm Evan Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get them, folks.